Football went from being a simple sport that only served as entertainment for some people who were fond of it to becoming a worldwide phenomenon that mobilizes large numbers of people and that has the ease of reaching the most remote places on the planet. Which is exactly why it's become a big business where almost unquantifiable amounts of money are produced. Of course, this makes it very attractive for people to participate in the world of football, but not only as players, managers, referees, agents, and even as owners. We also have much darker figures being part of these endeavors. And in this regard, we can identify all kinds of owners who have obtained their fortunes in different ways. And today we're going to talk about those who obtained it through crime, and notably drug trafficking. That's right, drug traffickers, a problem that might seem a long way from football, but actually is quite common in places like Colombia, Venezuela and Mexico, just to mention the more obvious examples. The presence of these individuals can be seen in the following case, which shows how drug dealers are really involved in football, and that due to fear or complicity, this incestuous relationship isn't usually brought to the public light, as indeed it should be. To further emphasize this point, we can go back to the judicial case against Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, which featured a witness nicknamed El Futbolista, Tirso Martinez Sanchez, a Mexican drug trafficker since the late 1980s, who, in addition to collaborating with El Chapo, worked with many other Mexican narcos. In the testimony, Martinez Sanchez confessed to having bought football clubs with money from illegal activities. This story that was later corroborated by Alberto de la Torre, the president of Femexfoot, that's the Mexican Football Federation, it was discovered that El Futbolista owned at least four football clubs, Querétaro FC, CD Irapuato, CF La Piedad and Venados FC. For those who do not know much about football in Mexico, we're talking about four clubs with an important tradition and a lot of history in that particular country. For example, CD Irapuato is 110 years old. It's also worth pointing out that the impact of these clubs has been mainly in the Ascenso, that's the second tier of Mexican football, being considered the elevator clubs since they're normally between the promotion to the first division and the relegation to the Ascenso. It was known that, for example, the Yucatan club, Venados FC, cost El Futbolista between six and seven hundred thousand dollars, while the Michoacan club, CF La Piedad, cost him an amount close to 2.2 million dollars. Negotiations for the acquisition of the clubs was carried out directly with the people who served as presidents of each sports institution, so there was no direct contact between Martinez Sanchez and Femexfoot at any time. In 2006, Femexfoot audited all the clubs that were playing the first division of Mexican football at that time. And in the course of this process, they found irregularities in Querétaro FC and CD Irapuato, which were the two teams that Martinez Sanchez had in the first tier of the country. And this led to a deepening of the investigation, which led to the kingpin himself and consequently triggered the alarms within the federation. The Council of Owners was formed and it was asked to do a kind of audit of all the teams to see the financial solvency, transparency and to determine which teams should be allowed to participate in the first division. The two owned by El Futbolista were found to not have the solvency or did not present sufficient papers to get Femexfoot comfortable enough to let them take part in the league. The main measure that Femexfoot took in response to the wrongdoing was to disaffiliate both clubs, using as a pretext a reduction of the participating clubs in the first division from 20 to 18, with the excuse of improving the level of the tournament and favouring competitiveness, but taking as a reference what happened in other national competitions like the German Bundesliga. The next step that Femexfoot took was to start negotiating with the person who appeared as president of both clubs, who actually was not Martinez Sanchez, for the purchase of Querétaro FC and CD Irapuato. Finally, the federation would pay around $14 million to recover both institutions from the hands of drug trafficking. We had to buy them in instalments, we had to remove him. Both cost around $14 million and were cheap as compared to what the teams are worth now, added De La Tour. The former president of Femexfoot also explained that it was not easy for them to agree to the sale of the clubs since they encountered strong resistance to the institutions changing owners. 
but de la Torre himself raised it as a change that had to take place for the sake of football. The clubs became property of the Federation, as they were waiting to get buyers to prevent the disappearance of such institutions. In the case of Querétaro FC, it was thanks to businessman Juan Antonio Hernández transferring the Lions of Morales to play under the identity of the Galos Blancos in the Ascenso tournament, managing to keep the club within the Femex Foot Championships. Since then, the club has gone through several owners until reaching the current investment group whose main visible face is Manuel Velarde. In the case of CD Irapuato, something similar happened. Ramon Morato transferred the Merida FC franchise to Irapuato in 2005 and then did something similar in 2008 with Pachuca Juniors, all with the aim of maintaining a football club at the Irapuato headquarters. Currently, the club's about to join the MX Expansion League, a championship that serves to stabilise the clubs, mainly the Ascenso and the Second Division, third tier of Mexican football, which have financial problems. But this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of how involved drug trafficking is in society, and specifically in football, and how different manoeuvres are made behind the scenes that avoid the exposure of these dark characters. But it's a very good example of how some clubs with an awful lot of history are being run by some really dark figures, and how that impacts the game as well. So there you have it, the great game sadly tainted by drug trafficking. But do let us know your thoughts about this in the comments below. Also, don't forget to give us a like and please do subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time.